We pray, Lord God, that your words are spoken and heard and, and listened to, Lord God, that they fall not on deaf ears today, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you continue to move in the sound spirit, Lord God. Hallelujah, let the people expect a great blessing today, Lord God. Hallelujah, let them receive a great blessing today. In the mighty name of Jesus, come on and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We bless God today. I feel like I don't even need to be up here, but I'm going to give you just a little something today because God's presence and his anointing is already here. And I thank God because his presence is already here, he's already doing some great things. He's already peeling away some layers. He's already bringing up some change and bringing some things up. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. So I bless God for being in this place today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all have my, my spirit. <laughs> I got to get my spirit back <laughs> from praise mode. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If I had to put a title on today for those that may be taking notes, I would call it crazy expectations. Amen. So I thank God because the song is lined right up. Hallelujah. With what I have today. And I think I'm going to cut it short because I feel like we're going to praise God <laughs> in this place today. I feel his presence and I know he's doing some great things in the house today. But crazy expectation. Amen. In the song that they were just singing, hallelujah, there is power in the name of Jesus. And when you know that there is power there, that should automatically touch your expectations, amen? That should automatically touch you because we know that there is power in the name of Jesus, right? Hallelujah, we know that along with the name of Jesus, there's power, there's authority, and the word says the only thing that we've got to do is speak it. Amen? And then after we speak it, I don't know about you, but I, I start to expect or believe that what I just spoke is going to happen. Amen? Amen. Does it always happen that easy? And that simple? No. No. Amen? Between the time that we think it and we speak it, something kind of happens in between. So that's why I'm here today to talk to you about some crazy expectations. Okay. Amen? Thought I think and for the past couple of weeks, we've been kind of on this thing of this foundation, and I believe that God is calling us to do some great things, but he's laying a great foundation. So I'm telling you today to get ready, because God is laying this foundation, he's going to expect you to carry it out. So he's building up and building you up to get to a point so that when you speak, hallelujah, when you believe, and when you expect that things manifest and that things happen because we've been kind of lost in a place where we speak it and we pray about it, but then we kind of get lost in the midst. Right. And then the peace where we should be expecting it, we don't get that far. But God says today, I need you back to get into a point of expecting because I said it, not because Andrea said it, but because God said it. And if God says it, you can do what? You can believe it. Amen? Amen? Have you ever prayed or wanted something so bad that you could almost taste it? You could even see it in your mind. But then you got to a point to where you began to talk yourself out of it. Or you began to believe that you weren't enough or that you, you, know, you couldn't do it because it was too much. I heard a word a couple, about two weeks ago where somebody told me to believe God for more. To ask him for more. And along with that, to expect more. And sometimes we limit ourselves. And so we don't even get to the point of expecting more because we've already let down and fear set. And so we don't even get to that point. So we got to get to the point of expectation and expecting more. Amen? Hallelujah. So thought, first it, it, it comes in your mind. You think about it. Then you begin to... Speak about it. So your thoughts and your spoken words should create some type of action. All right. So that should be, you know, the process. But I thank God for the supernatural. So see, we don't have to go through the normal process that the world goes through because, y'all, I can't get all of Acts 1 and 8, where it says that you shall receive. How? Mm. Y'all, that's the difference maker. 
God will not let me get away from the fact that he says that you shall receive power. You have already received the power. So now we got to get you to the point to where you are expecting what it is that you've been praying and seeking God for. So you got to get in position for that. And I don't want to jump ahead too fast, but we got to get to that point. Some of y'all can't bear with for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I see some of y'all in the morning time. I'll be watching y'all. Y'all like to say, good morning, Hillary. What y'all be saying? Y'all say that, right? Y'all say that? Don't act like y'all don't be on Facebook. I'll be watching y'all. I see y'all. So I see it come across every now and then. Good morning, Hillary. Isn't that what y'all do? Mm. Amen. So it, it sounds like, you know, you, you're speaking it. And you're almost getting there. But come with me to James 4 and 3. And we're going to come back to that good morning, Hillary. Amen. I was trying to make y'all laugh, but anybody laughs, I'm laughing so I'm laugh myself. <laughs> Amen. James uh, 4 and 3. Amen. James 4 and 3. And it says, Ye ask and receive that, and receive not, because you ask amiss that you may consume it with your lust. So it says, you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss. What's amiss? Absolute wrong direction. And it means that sometimes we're asking for things, we have the wrong intentions, the wrong motives, the wrong thoughts. And y'all know us ladies, you know, we. Sometimes, you know, we, we pray for things and we say, well, Lord, you know, you bless me with this job and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then our intentions are not there all the time or our motives are not always there. So a lot of times, you know, we, we kind of go past what it is that God has in place for us in regards to his will. So ladies, sometimes, you know, we say, well, Lord, you bless me with this and I'm going to do this. But we're going we're gonna to get cute. You know, we go buy a nice pair of shoes. We go out to dinner, nice ladies trip. Forgetting that there's a mission and a will that's in there that should line up with that ask. And there's nothing wrong with looking nice and there's nothing wrong with having nice things. But sometimes when we ask, we ask amiss. And we wonder why, well, Lord, why did this happen? Because we think in our minds, okay, I can see it. And I want it, but then when we pray for it, it doesn't always happen. So I'm here today to tell you it must line up with the will of God. So sometimes when we ask and we ask that miss, then it throws our confidence off. All right. Then it throws us off. And then we kind of fall back or we step back. Okay, well, God must not be hearing me or God must not be you know, answer, being, answering prayers to them. Amen? Amen? But all the while, our intentions were off. Yes. Sometimes we, wanna, we want funds or we want money because we want a nice house and we want to go home goods and deck it out. But then God has other plans for us. You know, when we get a car and we drive right past the person who made need a ride. Jesus. Or we, we, we neglect to do the things that God says that we need to take care of first. I think a couple of weeks ago we talked about putting God first. Yeah. So asking that miss, sometimes we got to get that right first. What's in your heart? Mm -hmm. You know, I think the word says that man looks at the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. At the, at the heart. Yeah. So we want a new job and we're praying for it. And I believe in calling things as though they're not, as though they were. But we got to line up with the will of God. Amen. So I, as I was studying this, the Lord took me back and I thought about a few things. And I can remember a time when I was seeking for a job, looking for a job. And one thing about God, he's not a man that he should lie. And he's bound by his word. So if God's word says it, he has to honor it. Amen. And he's going to do it. So when your prayers line up with God's word, amen, and your heart's intention, then it has no other ability but to come to pass. So we got to line back up and get back into position so that when we get to the point of asking, we're not asking a miss. And then we start to expect those things to happen and those things to come to pass. Come with me to 
in another verse 23 and 19. And I just said this, but come with me then. And I want to talk a little bit about God being bound by his word. Amen. And I'll come back to what I just said about me seeking that position or that job. I do a lot of, and y'all have heard me say this before, a lot of consulting, and I do a lot of consulting because a lot of times people don't like to read policies and procedures. Okay. One thing about the Word of God and, and, and the Bible is filled with policies and procedures and things that are available to us and for us, but we don't know the policies and the procedures because we don't read it. So we don't know what's afforded to us and we don't know what God has promised us because we don't pick up the good book to read it. But God is bound by his word. If you don't take anything else from me today, take that. God is bound by his word. And if he said it, Numbers um, 23 and 19, if he said it, he has to honor it. So I'm going to talk to you about expectation, but I also want you to get in your spirit today that when you speak God's words back to him, you can expect it to happen because God is bound by his word. And God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said it, shall he not do it? Or have he spoken it, he shall not make it good? He's not a man that, he's not, that he, she should lie. So if he said it, is he not going to do it? Amen. He's going to do it, amen? So he's bound by what he says. Come with me to John, and I just want to lay a few scriptures out, um, to John 5 and 3. Amen. Expectation and expecting God to hold up his end in regards to the word. You can count on it. You can expect it. John 5 and 3 says, These things have I written unto you that you believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. First John. That was First John 5 and 13. First John 5 and 13. Amen. And I'm going to read 14 again. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Yeah. 15. Yeah. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we yeah. have the petitions that we desire of him. Mm. So you got to get into position because you, you, you first got to have confidence yeah. and know that he heareth you. John 11 and 14, now I'm just laying some scriptures to go and come back to them, but John 14 and 11. Put your fingers on 1 John 5 and 13 and we're going to come back to that scripture as well. So y'all just read with me a little bit. Amen. John, not 1 John, but just John 11 and 14. Mm -hmm. Amen. John 11 and 14. And then we're going to come back to 1 John 5 and 13. John 11, verse 40. Amen. Amen. But put your fingers on 1 John 5 and 13, because we're going to come back there. Amen. Who's that handsome guy? I'm telling you. <laughs> Amen. So I'm setting up while he's getting there. So in John 14 and John 11 and 40, this is the death of Lazarus. And we just talked about believing God for more and for greater. The biggest thing to me in this, in John 11 and 40 was a death. So somebody had to believe that he could be brought back to life or that God could bring him back to life, amen? amen. And to me, that's a great thing. That's a major thing, that's a big thing. Somebody had to believe and had to have confidence for it. Amen. So, in the word it says that Jesus loved Lazarus. Yes. And he loved Mary and Martha. So, Lazarus was Jesus, his uncle. So, he loved him. So, when he saw his mother and his aunt, um, Martha, in tears and emotional about the death of Lazarus, he had to do something. 
Amen. So I thank God because in the midst of it, he had to have, they had to have confidence that he was going to come. I'm going to read it, y'all. Okay. And it says, Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, yes. thou should have seen the glory of, of God. Yes. Keep going, please. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Wow. Now, remember, we just read in 1 John 5 and 13, and it says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. You have to have confidence. And it says that, Father, this is Jesus point praying, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. So even before he let any other thoughts sink in, he said, Lord, I thank you because I know that you've heard me. He spoke that in confidence. Go to the next one, please. And I know, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Next one, please. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Go back to John, uh, 1 John 5 and 13, because I want you to see the connection here before we move on. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, yes. he heareth us. Yes. So the first thing that Jesus did when he went to raise Nazareth up, amen, he spoke it in confidence. And the first thing that he said was, Lord, I know that you heareth me. I know that you always heareth me. And then he proceeded to declare the decree and call Nazareth forward. So that's the confidence and the expectation that I was mentioning earlier. You've got to be confident in God's word and not only confident, expect that he's going to do it. So this is Jesus talking to Lazarus before he even did a thing. He spoke confidence in the air. Yeah. And, and a couple of scriptures up, he told Mary, and he told, he said, do you believe? So he had to do a faith check because if they did not believe, then guess what? They didn't need to be there. Because when you need to surround yourself with people that have the same faith as you, because if they're speaking in your ears telling you the opposite, then it's going to cause you to fall back. Amen. It's going to cause your confidence to drop. How you? So the first thing that Jesus said to them was, first of all, do you believe? Because if you believe and if you've got the confidence to understand and know that he heard me and that he heard you, how you can you go ahead and expect it to happen? I think that Mary and Martha knew the power that Jesus possessed, amen? Jesus knew the power that he possessed, but the first thing he had to do was line up with the word and speak in confidence. And in John, hallelujah, and I'm going to keep saying this until it drops in your spirit, hallelujah, if you ask anything according to his will, you've got to know that he hears you first, that he hears your prayers. That's where we get lost at a lot of times. We assume that God didn't hear us. So we continue to go back and petition and ask for the same thing over and over and over again. And we're petitioning for the same thing over and over again because we assume that he what? That he didn't hear us. But the word says if you stand in confidence, then you can know that he heard you. So that's why Jesus was able to speak and say when he spoke that prayer before he told Lazarus to come, he was able to say, Lord, I know you hear me. Jesus. Hallelujah. But I'm here because, you know, there are people standing by and they're watching. Because they're watching, Lord, I'm standing in confidence because I know that you're going to do it. But in the midst of it, I'm calling on you now. And once he got past that, he was able to say, Lazarus, come forth. Jesus. And when he said it, he said it in authority and in confidence. As I was reading and studying, the Lord showed me that there is a difference between prayer and declarations and decrees. One, it 